TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. Still live. I've been on Twitch since 12, 11.30 p.m. Three hours later. You can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool, man. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This is uh, Lad Bible of Clan, one of my favorite channels. This is 19 Minutes With. I spent 34 years in prison for a murder I didn't commit. Don't forget, we do got the Patreon, man. This is a list of everything that's on there. I don't know why it's popping up like this, but you know. Y'all get the point, you know what I'm saying? Don't forget the Discord. The Discord is down below, the link to it. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got to say, man. Let's get into this, man. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I was born in uh, Onken on the Isle of Man, um, 1950. Isle of Man, a self-governing British crown dependency on the Irish Sea. I know what Isle of Man is. I just wanted to read it. 54. Yeah, we need viewer discretion for this, you think? I so. You feel me? A few uh, weeks after I was born. Baptized, my mother left me on my grandmother's no, door. Duncan on the Isle of Man, um, 1954. A few uh, weeks after I was baptized, my mother left me on my grandmother's doorstep, and she left never to return to the Isle. My Damn. grandparents made plans with the the church on the Isle, the Catholic Church, to have me sent away. I was sent away to Ottawa, Canada, in August of 54, to a place called the Saint Joseph's Orphan Asylum. Ran by the great nuns of St. Joseph's Orphan Asylum. The cross, <clears throat> which I always tell people sounds warm and fuzzy, I'm sure. Um, but I was only there. Uh, St. Joseph's Orphan Asylum was the center of child abuse scandal in the 20th century. With a name like that, you know what I'm saying? About six or eight months. It turned out that the girl who took me to Canada that had worked for my grandmother, a gal named Martha Virginia Boswell, who was one of the Boswell gypsies that used to come to the Isle of Man, she saw that my future there might not be good. She took me illegally and took me into the U.S. Eventually, we ended up uh, going down these seaborne uh, communities and landing in Phoenix, Arizona. I was wondering why you had an American accent. Okay, that tells me that. And... Um, she had my grand my mother had given her my her passport to tell me in case i ever wanted to find her it was like a cookie crumb but she had taken my mom's pat picture out put her picture in so she used my mother's name so i was raised under my birth name i i believe she was my birth mother i called her i, I called her mom um she was the one that had told me all about my being from the isle of man and funny enough all throughout my life all i could think about was getting back home at some point Unfortunately, due to bad relationships and uh, the problem that she had, she had drinking issues um, that um, she got real sick. And when because of some of the people she worked with, well to do one particular family called the Wetmores, um, they had adopted a boy and a girl and they had plans to move because Dr. Wetmore had just gotten his degree and he was going to be teaching at a university. And something happened to the boy. And the boy was 12 years old. Even though I was 14, I was small because I'm malnutrition. Um, and um, I could actually fit into a 12-year-old's clothes and stuff. So he told her he would give me a good life and adopt me and stuff like that. And he said that he paid her to take my custody. And um, I was given that child's identity, his name, his date of birth, his social security number, all the things that you need to be a person. And um, if your business kept employees on payroll throughout the pandemic, innovation refunds can. So you. OK. Nobody knows what happened to that child, even the, the U.S. government. Yeah, like wh where did he go? And looked and could not find any evidence 
of that child after I took his identity. Jamie with the Wetmores after being adopted into the family as John Wetmore. So, yeah, but Dr. Wetmore was unique in his own ways. Him and I, we, he used to try to beat me and things. And that he used to try to what? In his own ways. Him and I, we, he used to try to beat me and things. And that's kind of believed to what may have happened to the other child. He may have done it and he, the other boy may not survive. The biggest difference. This, honestly, this already, like, the, literally, we, we're three minutes and 40 seconds in. This sounds like it could be a movie script. It's tough. The difference between me and him was because I grew up with this idea that I was something special through Martha, because one of the things she'd always told me to remember was I was a man of the isle, son of the sea, and a brother of the storm. And I could weather anything because the storm around me is my brother, so I can weather anything. Uh, that's, a, that's a W... <laughs> That's a W uh, mind frame to live in right there. Whoever, Martha, salute. One particular incident, and it was really the last time he did a beating, was that he beat me with a belt while he had me hold a tree out in the back. And he beat me on my legs and my lower back and stuff. And I wouldn't shed a tear for him. And when he was done, I turned and said, is that the best you got? And he backed away and went inside and stared at me. He was used to breaking men. I'm from an age of time where whoopings was regular. That sounds regular to me. To me, in my mind. But if you wasn't doing nothing to deserve that, that's a whole different thing, you know what I'm saying? That's tough. I remember one time I was getting a whooping and, and, and I turned around and looked at my mom like, are you done? I don't want you to hurt yourself. <laughs> hurt her ego I, I didn't get a whooping since that day in his uh, uh, way of don't whoop your kids people just talk to them all whoopings do is 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 tell your children violence gets an answer violence gets it done so try to talk first business and, and stuff so he was having a problem with this this child that could stand up to him and no matter what, I, I wasn't afraid of him. And that was something that scared him more than anything else. I signed up for the United States Navy. Um, it was, I had a lot of friends going in the Marine Corps at the time because I was still rather small. I didn't think I could make it be a, be a Marine. I didn't think I was big enough. Yeah. But the other side of the coin, I didn't want to hurt people. So I decided to enlist as a Navy corpsman, which is a medical corps. How was your... Um like state of mind after that? Did you see anything that particularly affected you or, or stuck with you? Well, just the fact that if, if anybody really thinks about the Vietnam era, uh, vets that were in that time, <clears throat> Vietnam was not a popular, um, politically popular um, engagement. You, most people wouldn't even say they were, were Vietnam vets. They, they, or, they would, or they went to hide. Some hid in the streets as homeless and drunks and drug addicts. Some went into the woods. Some went to Canada. Some went down to the jungles of South America uh, because you just couldn't fit in, in in places like that. I hid in the world of motorcycles. I preferred to be around motorcycles. Okay. I mean, I get it. Okay. I mean, that's, that's like you had to hide there, but that's a decent place to hide, I guess, right? No? Huh? motorcycles of people because I learned with people if you say one wrong thing the relationship can be ruined forever yeah so my personal relationships with people uh, were never very good so in Halloween 1977 um, my wife my first wife had abandoned me and my son when he was nine months old I had my son until 1978 and then uh, my ex, my, my first wife, she had decided, her parents, her parents decided we should get divorced and she should get my son, even though she didn't want my son. She didn't want to be a mom. Um, Dr. Wetmore had contacted me and said, look, I want your son. I'll give him the proper life that you, Man, you didn't hell want. no. <laughs> I bet you you was absolutely not, Mr. Wetmore, buddy. I'll raise him to be a doctor or a lawyer, but I wouldn't do it. 
in a fit of anger, he threw an envelope at me and it had my, my, what my mom's passport and it had my baptism certificate for the Isle of Man. And uh, told me, you're not an American. You're not my son. Get out of here. I never want to see you again. And then he switched sides and he made sure my ex got my son. I met the other girl, my, my second wife through a friend's mind. Uh, she was related to, and, um, I started getting my life back together. We had a son and I just, I thought maybe it's time for me to find, go back to the aisle. Now I've got proof that I'm from there. Uh, so I was going to get a passport, uh, to go back and try to find my family. I didn't know if my family is alive or dead or, you know, who was, who was there or whatever. But I, I felt this calling that I need to go back. And I told my wife, this is what I want to do. And she kept saying, no, no, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's a good idea. And I told her, look, it's not like I'm moving over there. I'm just going to go over for a trip. And I was going to. Man, I forgot. I completely forgot what the title of this was. I spent 34 years in prison of a murder I didn't commit. If you did that on the Isle of Man, I, I, they're very strict over there, right? You can't even litter without getting time. You, you better find a garbage can. It's up. Going to go by myself because I didn't want her to come with me in case everything went terribly wrong. You know? And uh, anyway, come to find out years later that she had actually uh, been telling Dr. Wetmore things I was doing. And Dr. Wetmore realized that if I did go get a passport, he would be likely in trouble because they would ask where I'd come from. I don't have a birth certificate. I'm using this other kid's name, but at this time I was starting to take back my birth name with a, once I had the passport. Um, so he realized he might be in problem. At which point in time he set in play. Uh, Dr. Wetmore is very manipulative. I'm telling you, that could, he could be, he could, it was a movie on him. A number of other situations that came about that would eventually lead me to prison. Wait, what? Did I just hear? T3. Say it again. That came about that would eventually lead me to prison. 1983, obviously there was a, a day that probably changed the course of your life forever. Actually, it was December of 82. I had met a girl named Jackie who had been Martha's youngest daughter. And I thought my half sister because I thought Martha was my mom. And her uncle, her dad's brother, who was been caring for her, a guy named Stanley John Kearns. And then she had a son named Danny. And they were living in L.A. And they wanted to move up to be around me. So I helped them move up. In the six months they were there from December till June, it was just terribly, terribly wrong. Uh, John and I got into one argument after another. Uh, he used to come down to my bike shop and try tell me, tell me and my crew how to do things. Um, a few times he was drunk and he pulled knives. I'd get an altercation with him. I used to put him in chokeholds to make him subdued and uh, stuff. And though police had gotten called because neither of us pressed charges and they weren't there when the crimes were happening, we never got, neither of us got arrested. But it was in the history, they, the police reports. So there was a history of this. Um, so in June of uh, 83, I was out of town. He got into an altercation with Jackie and uh, started choking her son. And my wife and Jackie at that time took both of them to pull his hands off the boy. And then the following day or so, he was driving the car and he started punching Jackie and she stopped the car and ran into uh, the Marjorie Mason uh, Women's Center. I come back, I'm found, he's arrested. I tell my wife, under no circumstances, he'd come to the house. You know, we've got a young son. I don't want you to have to put up with him. You know, uh, I said, if he does get out of jail, whatever, don't let him in. It was about a, about a month later. Um, I come home and uh, my wife's car's not there. It's like 1130 at night. And this is in California still, okay. No lights are on in the house, and we always left the light on if I'm out. And um, walked in, and I have a man stretched out on my floor. And like I said, having been a corpsman, having been a you know medical corps, I checked him, and he was dead. And I could see he was dead. Yet there were no wounds. Um, 
a lot of people said, oh, why didn't you call the police? And my response has always been, here's a man I have a history of fighting with. I'm a biker, and at that time I was with a motorcycle club, so I was a patch holder. Under no way that I could see was I not going to jail. My first thought was I have to secure my home. I have to get him away from my home no matter what else I do. I didn't call anybody. I just went and got a sleeping bag, <clears throat> put him in the sleeping bag, and was, and was putting him in the back of my truck when my wife suddenly drove up. And it's probably about <clears throat> maybe 1230 now or so. And uh, my wife jumps out of the car and says, yeah, he came over. Uh, I, f I gave him dinner and then I gave him his asthma capsules that I've had. And uh, I said, you weren't supposed to have let him in. Oh, but, but he was agitated and I didn't, I didn't want him to do anything. God damn it, Jackie. No, not Jackie. Uh, what was his wife's name? At the end of the day, the man of the house said, don't let this guy in, you let him in. And that. The baby's here and she said that after he collapsed, she got frightened and she went to a friend's house and she's been there. And then she finally figured I should come home in case I was home. And uh, she knew I would be able to figure out what to do. And we start driving. I have no idea where I'm going. I don't really know what I'm gonna do. I just have to get him away from the house. Um, I get it, that's your wife. You gonna ride, she gonna do, she did all of the wrong things though. No offense, no offense. She did all of the wrong things. The things that you told her not to do, she did them. And then when he collapsed, she did another wrong, like. But then for the next four, four and a half hours, she's harping on me about, you, you, you're stupid, you didn't bring a shovel. What are you gonna do with the body? Are you gonna bury it? Are you gonna burn it? Are you, what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna dump it? What are you gonna do? For four and a half hours. The nerve. I'm trying to drive and trying to think. I've got this harping in my ear. And next thing I know, I see false dawn starting. And we were driving down a rural road where a lot of farm workers would be coming <clears throat> to work soon. And I just pulled over and I took his body out and I set him up against a post right off the road where he'd be easily found. Because again, it wasn't one of these things where I was trying to hide the body. I just wanted it away from my house. It couldn't be found at my house. And then and this will be always one of the things people will say, one of the stupidest things I did, and I'm not gonna disagree. Figuring he just got out of jail, I didn't figure he would have identifications and stuff with him. So I took out a piece of paper and pencil and I wrote, in case of emergency, call. And I put my name and phone number and I stuck it in his wallet. Drove him away because he couldn't be found at your house, then wrote a note with your name and nothing. You know where you're going? Now, me looking from the outside in, it's easy for me to say like, wow, a lot of this was dumb. A lot of this wasn't the right thing to do. A lot of this wasn't smart. But in the moment, you know what I'm saying? He was in the moment. And I can't even, I can't even lie, it's still dumb. And I left. I wanted to be on your side so bad. Left that. And we drove away. So it was about three days later and. Once again though, let this be known. No, the police called and I uh, said they'd found his body. And they asked me, when was the last time you saw Stanley alive? And um, I told him I, about a month ago, maybe, you know, at least three, three a few weeks to a month. And so everything seemed to be okay, except for the moment that they also had contacted Jackie because she had been the victim in his, the reason he was in jail. 
and told him that he'd been he found dead. She immediately grabbed some of his checks because she he'd lived at her place and got with my wife and they went down and they cashed checks on his bank account to get back what she said was money he had taken from her from her welfare or what they would call the dole over here. Um, but this is three days after he's been found dead. And of course the banks have been notified <clears throat> and they're going in there with the checks signed by him. It was just about 30 days from the time they'd found the body that they came and. <laughs> Unbelievable. Arrested my wife and, uh, and Jackie. And uh, I found out that they'd been arrested. The initial coroner's report had come back for death by strangulation. And uh, though there was no evidence, the fact that the history was there that I had choked him out and because I was you know, physically capable of being able to do that, <clears throat> it immediately turned to the fact they thought I did it, but they had no evidence. They went to Jackie and told her they were gonna, she was facing 18 years for ch uh, forged checks. When they told her she was gonna face possibly 18 years, she said, well, let, let, let. <laughs> She got in there like, gonna. <laughs> she was in that mug, like. Jackie, Jackie, oh, the singer, she got the singing on let, that. let me tell you what the happened. And they went, tell us what? And he said, well, I want immunity, da, da, da. And uh, the DA said, okay, and said, uh, well, here's what really happened. Sandy, uh, his wife, poisoned the man. And then he helped her get rid of the body. And when they said poison, they went, what do you mean? He was strangled. They said, no, he was poisoned. They went back, did a coroner's, report, uh, coroner's uh, inquest thing again. And sure enough, potassium cyanide had been... <laughs> And then this is just, this just get worse and worse. What had killed him. They now charge my wife with murder one, with two. It was in the pills, the asthma pills. It had to be. But the wife, Jackie, had to have done that. That's. Two counts of special circumstances. Each one carries the death penalty. Drivers in Florida are ditching their car insurance. They shouldn't because can't nobody in Florida drive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One for uh, the poisoning and one for getting monetary gain because apparently Jackie had given her a little bit of money on the side too. They stop even bothering with me except that every couple weeks they keep changing my charges around. Accessory, conspiracy, uh, all this stuff. Lying to the police, which was their favorite one. They tried my wife in December. Jackie was their primary witness. Um, the jury came back 11 to one to convict my wife on murder one with special circumstances. But they didn't have a, a complete jury. So they had a hung jury. So the DA came to me. A what jersey? A, a what? A what? Complete jury. So they had a hung jury. So the DA came to me. They gotta be unanimous or something? And said, look, we're gonna, we lost this by this much. So we're gonna do it again and I'm gonna make sure that we don't have any moral you know, problems on the jury. Unless you, you wanna take this deal I'm gonna offer you. I'm gonna offer you a one time and one time only deal. And my, my attorney was sitting there, my wife's attorney was sitting there and DA was sitting there. And he said, we feel you're responsible for whatever happens there. So here's the deal. We'll offer you a 13 year prison sentence. And I, he goes, uh, now you have 10 minutes to make a decision. Think about this. 10 minutes? Are you going to be able to tell your son that you allowed his mom to be put to death because you would not step up for her? Yeah. Dang, ain't that coercion? You can't do that though. Oh, by the way, you got five minutes left. Um, who do you think you'd do better time in prison? You, veteran, biker, or your wife who's just a housewife and a mom? Oh, and I'll sweeten the deal. I will never personally oppose any parole for you. And her attorney said, you know, this is the best we can get. So I took it. I would do 13 years so my wife would be released. How 13 turn into 30 photo? From all of her charges given. We got a minute and 30 seconds to explain what happened. To my son. My wife got released two weeks after I took the deal. 
And because she'd been in the county jail for like six months with these other girls, one of them introduced her to her brother. And a few weeks after she got out, she was gone. Uh, took my son. You took a bargain deal, my boy. You took a, you took a deal, so your wife could avoid that penalty of death, and she did you like this. I ain't even gonna get into the. I ain't even gonna get into it, man. Y'all, y'all, you see what happens, man. That boy was willing to throw 13 years of his life away so you can. And left the state with uh, this other guy. The way the sentence had been is I was getting 13 years if I stayed out of trouble, worked, good time, all that. But what started the downfall on that was uh, about three years after I went in, uh, the California legislature changed the law and took all the good time and work time away from uh, life term inmates. Well, now I can't do half time because now they just took it all the way. So now, now I'm looking at 27 to life. I did half my life and two thirds of my adult life in prison. You could have three stabbings oh, during no. your yard time before they'd finally close the yards, make you go back to your cells. Because they. What you mean, part two? I'm too phys I'm too involved for part two. I need this now. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notes. Hey, listen, I ain't, hey, man.